Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this interesting session where we are going to talk about Kubernetes controllers and services. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We start this session by understanding what exactly is Kubernetes, its features and why was there ever a need to develop such a tool. Moving ahead, we'll deep dive into looking at various types of Kubernetes controllers and then services. Finally, we'll end this session by taking a look at ways for accessing Kubernetes services. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel to stay updated on trending technologies. And also, if you're looking for online training certification in Kubernetes, please check out the links given in the description box below. Alright, so let us now go ahead and understand what exactly is Kubernetes and why do we need it, right? As you see here in the diagram, when a multiple services run inside a container, you may want to scale things up. This is fine as long as your company or your organization is small. But the problem arises when you're working with large scale industry. You see, it's really tough to maintain all of this. This is because it would increase the cost of maintaining the services and the complexity to run the servers side by side. Now to avoid setting up services manually and overcome the challenges, something has to be done, right? Well, this is where container orchestration system came into existence. You see this engine or this container orchestration system let us organize multiple containers in such a way that all the underlying mechanism is launched, containers are healthy and distributed in clustered environment. In today's world, there are two main players over here. First off, we have Kubernetes and then we have Docker Swarm. Speaking about Kubernetes, right? Well, Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating computer application deployment, scaling and management. It is originally designed and developed by Google, but currently it is maintained by a company called as Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It aims to provide a platform for automating deployment, containerized using clusters of hosts. It works with a range of container tools and run containers in a clusters and often with image which is built using a Docker. So now that we know what exactly is Kubernetes, right? Let's try to understand how it works internally. As I mentioned earlier, right? Kubernetes is basically an orchestration system. So what exactly does this orchestration system mean, right? Well, in general, if I take a look, orchestration means you have, you have a group of objects in front of you or a group of participants and you try to control them in a fashion manner, in an ordered manner, right? So this is exactly what is happening. You see the way over here Kubernetes manages is the life cycle of containerized application across the entire fleet of them. It's a sort of meta process that grants the ability to automate the deployment scaling of services containerized at once. Several containers running the same application are grouped together. These containers act as a replica and serve as a load balance income request. A container orchestration then supervises these groups ensuring that they are operating correctly. A container orchestrator is essentially an administrator in charge of operating a fleet of containerized application. If a containerized needs to be restarted or acquired more resources, the orchestrator take case of it for you. So this is exactly how Kubernetes work. All right, guys. So moving ahead, let us now understand what is Kubernetes controllers in general. Okay. But before we move ahead to controllers in Kubernetes, let's see what does this controllers actually mean in a common sense term. Okay, so this controllers, right? Controllers are basically an infinitely running loop that keeps on executing as long as we have that application running. Okay, and the responsibility of these controllers is to monitor everything that is happening in the system. So to give you a real time example, let's take something like a room temperature controller. Okay, so we basically have this thermostat installed in majority of the rooms, right? So whatever the current state of the room is, whatever is your desired state of the room, that is monitored by a thermostat. And thermostat continuously monitors if the room temperature is dropping or increasing. And if the room temperature is changed, right? So it brings it according to whatever the difference amount is there. So coming back to Kubernetes, right? Well, controllers in Kubernetes are basically like this control loop that watches the entire state of your cluster and then make or do request changes needed to be done. Each controller tries to move the current state that is closer to the desired state over here. So let us now move ahead and discuss some of the popular controllers that is available to us in Kubernetes. First off, we have something called as replica set. You see, replica set's purpose is to maintain a stable state of a replica pod running at any given time. As such, it is often used to guarantee the availability of a specified number of identical pods. You see, replica set ensure that a specific number of pod replicas are running at any given time. However, a deployment of a container is a high level concept that manages the replica sets 
and provides directive updates to pods along with a lot of other useful features. Therefore, we recommend using deployment rather than just using replica set at once. So what I'm trying to say here is that you may never need to manipulate replica set object. Instead, you can just use a deployment instance over here. All right, so speaking about deployments, right? So deployment basically provides a declarative updates for pods and replica sets. You describe a desired state in a deployment and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at a control rate. You can define deployment to a creative new replica set or to remove the existing deployment and adopt all the resources with a new deployment. So moving ahead to the next step that is stateful set. So this stateful set is a workload API object used to manage stateful application. This manages the deployment scaling of the pod and provides guarantee that ordering the uniqueness of these pods. Like deployment, a stateful set manages the pod that are based on identical container specs. Unlike deployment, a stateful set maintains a sticky identity of the each pod. These pods are created for the same spec, but are not interchangeable as they are referred to by unique identity. So moving ahead to the daemon set. You see, a daemon set ensures that all the nodes run a copy of a pod. As nodes are added to the cluster, pods are added to them. As nodes are removed from the cluster, then those pods are removed and sent to a garbage collector. Deleting a daemon set will clear out all the pods that it has created. Some of the typical use cases of daemon sets are running a cluster stored daemon set on every node. Okay, running a logs collection on a daemon on every node. In a simple case, right, a daemon set covers all the nodes and would be used for each type of daemon. A more complex setup might use multiple daemon set for a single type of a daemon, but the different flags or different memory and a CPU request for different hardware types are used here. So let us now move ahead and see what are Kubernetes services, right? So what do you understand when someone says what exactly is the service, right? Well, a Kubernetes service is a logic abstraction for a deployment group of pods in a cluster. Since pods are ephemeral, a service enables a group of pods which provides a specific function such as web services or image processing or whatever it is to assign a name and a unique IP address. As long as the service is running that particular IP address, it will not change. Services are defined like with different policies that goes there. Majority of the time we get asked what is the difference between service and a deployment? Well, you see in Kubernetes, a deployment is a method of launching a pod with a containerized application and ensuring that this necessary number of replica is always running on the cluster. On the other hand, a service is responsible for exposing an interface to those pods which enable network access from either within or from outside the cluster. All right, so now that we know a brief about what exactly is services, let us now move ahead and see what are the different types of clusters that are available. Starting off with cluster IP service. So the cluster IP service is a default type of service which is used to expose service on IP address internet to the cluster. This access is permitted only from within the cluster. Moving on to the next one, we have headless service. Services that do not need load balancing and only expose a single IP can create headless service by specifying none as the cluster IP. Headless service can be defined as a selectors in which cases endpoint records are created at the API that modify the DNS to return address that point to the pods that are exposing the service. Headless services without selectors don't create an endpoint records. The DNS ecosystem configures either the CNAME record or the record of the endpoint with the same name as the service. Moving on to the next type that is node port server. You see node port are opening ports at every cluster nodes. Kubernetes will route traffic that come into the node port to the service. Even if the service is not running on that particular node. You see node port is intended as a foundation of high level method of ingress such as load balancing and are useful in deployment. Moving on to the next type we have external name service. External name services are similar to other Kubernetes services. However, instead of being accessed by a cluster IP address, it returns a CNAME record with a value that defines in the external name. All right, so moving on to the last type we have load balancer service. For those clusters that are running on a public cloud providers like AWS or Azure, creating a load balancer service provides an equivalent to a cluster IP service extending to a load balancing service that is specific to that particular cloud provider. You see Kubernetes over here will automatically create a load balancer and provide a firewall rules if needed and then populate the service with an external IP address assigned by the cloud provider. 
So now that we know Kubernetes services, let us now understand how can you access these services, right? So how do you access these services? Well, you see, services simply point to the pods using labels. Since services are not node specific, a service can point to a pod regardless of if they run in a clustered environment or not. Here by exposing the service IP address as well as the DNS service name, the application can be reached to either methods. So how do you access this Kubernetes services is a question over here, right? Well, you see here there are two basic ways. First off, we have DNS, which is actually the most common way. And the other one is ENV variable. Talking about DNS, right? The DNS method is recommended method for discovering the services. To use this method, a DNS server must first be installed to the cluster. The DNS server monitors the Kubernetes API and when new service is created, its name becomes available for easy routing and for requesting of an application. Next, as I mentioned earlier, we have ENV variable. This method relies on something called as kubelet adding environment variable for each active service for every node that is running at any given point. So to conclude over here, we can access Kubernetes services by two ways. One is by DNS and the other one is by ENV variable. All right, guys, with this, we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in a comment box below. Until next time, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!